We're at the point where if that drill touches the ground, it would have to touch our bodies first. We just can't let it happen. which has become the battleground for one of the most divisive issues in the UK, fracking. Frack up! Frack up! The government leads us to believe that the dash for gas will bring with it a bunch of opportunities. However, not everyone is convinced. What do we want? Shale is important for our country. It could bring 74,000 jobs, over three billion pounds of investment. I want us to get on board this change that is doing so much good and bringing so much benefit to North America. I want us to benefit from it here as well. The British government is going full steam ahead with fracking, a controversial method of extracting oil and natural gas. After the discovery of significant reserves of natural gas, more than half the UK is now up for grabs for shale gas exploration. Sensing a new gold rush, major energy companies are lining up to get their share. Fracking, what's happening? I'm not really sure, fracking? Some sort of dance or something? The type of fracking being introduced in the UK is called high volume hydraulic fracturing, which involves drilling horizontally for miles and using millions of gallons of water at a very high pressure, mixed with sand and chemicals, to extract more gas from deep and complex geological structures. Between Preston and Blackpool, we're looking at about three and a half thousand boreholes, way more intensive than anywhere else in the world. High volume hydraulic fracking has only been widespread in the US in the last decade. While it has created a new energy boom with many new millionaires, it has also divided communities amid accusations of damage to the environment and public health. Just like that. Despite many European countries banning this type of fracking, the UK government has decided to go all out for shale. I want this to happen as quickly as possible, provided, of course, we're, we're clear that it's environmentally safe, and I think we are clear about that. This is not a uh, a dictatorship where the central government just says this is going to happen, we have to get planning permission from local yes. councils and so on. I think it's going to happen soon. So we set out on a journey to find out what fracking would mean for the UK. Behind me is the first and only site to have ever been fracked in the UK. In 2011, it caused two minor earthquakes. Surrounding it are all little villages farms, you have cattle grazing, they grow potatoes. The fact that the first ever attempt to frack went so terribly wrong is what has made the people in the communities worry about fracking and, and organize to try to stop it. <laughs> that was the same security guard that has been following us for three days. Quadrilla are on our case. Quadrilla is one of the leading fracking companies in the UK. Priest Hall was Quadrilla's first fracking site, but soon after the earth tremors, it was shut down. To find out what happened, we met up with an oil and gas engineer. You were advising Quadrilla and you had access to their facilities back in 2011 when it went terribly wrong at Priest Hall. Do you know what happened? Uh, I have to be very careful with, uh, with discussing what happened at Priest Hall and I can't really divulge too much information about what's happening now. I can say what happened then, though, uh, in terms of the tremors that occurred, particularly the 1.5 tremor and the 2.3, because those tremors damaged the well over a significant interval. The UK was the first country in the world 
to link earthquakes or tremors to fracking. No one had done it before anywhere, not in the States either. We do know in the UK because of what happened at Priest Hall. And we really have to be careful there that when we have an earthquake or a tremor, the well integrity has been maintained. Mike Hill also helped set up the government's office for unconventional oil and gas. The government assures us fracking will be safe because the UK is much more regulated than the US. Don't think the UK is heavily regulated and the US isn't. It's the exact opposite, in fact. It really is the exact opposite. There are no industry-specific regulations in the UK at all. Even though the Royal Society called for them in its report two years ago in June 2012 and said they were needed, the government have ignored that. We need shale gas industry-specific regulations to protect the public and the environment. We know from the US and indeed from Australia, flowback is very, very expensive to get rid of. And this is the water that comes out of the well yeah. with radioactive substances. I, I, yeah, I, I, would, I'd never, I'd never call it water myself because if you drank it, you'd die. So I, I suppose it could be what we could describe it as water. I call it fracking waste. What flowed back up the well from the one in Priestall in Lancashire was arsenic at 20 times the safe level of drinking water, lead at 1,438 times the safe level for drinking water, cadmium at 156 times the safe level of drinking water, uh, bromide and radioactive sludge at 90 times the maximum permissible limit. So that's if you had nothing at the surface. That's what's flowing back up the well. Did the well at Priest Hall Farm leak? I cannot discuss that at this point in time. Definitely not. And what would happen if you did? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> I. I would genuinely be afraid at the moment to go on record and state what happened there at Priest Hall. Genuinely be afraid. There's too much money at stake. Quadrilla have their sights set on the Blackpool Lancashire region because below it lies trillions of square cubic feet of gas, which Quadrilla say could be worth up to 140 billion pounds. Despite the many questions surrounding their first attempt to frack at Priest Hall, in June 2014, Quadrilla applied for new drilling permissions in the area. To oppose this, local community groups gathered in central Blackpool. Today is about bringing together the smaller groups to oppose the coming planning. Um, well, there's a planning application just been put in for a site on Preston New Road. And it will be the first major high volume hydraulic fracturing site in the United Kingdom. We want to wake up the whole of Lancashire. We want Lancashire to become self-empowered. A lot of people in society, even though you live in a democracy, have no idea how to object and say no. We just explain, this is how you extract shale gas. You drill down, you drill horizontally, you blast at high volume up with this um, water infused with chemicals and sand, the gas seeps back, you seal it all up with cement, you walk away. At that point, people have a million questions. Why did only half of it come back? What happens to the stuff left behind? What do they do with the waste that did come back? That's now toxic and it's radioactive, what do they do with that? Who comes back next year and checks that's all right? Who comes back 10 years later and checks the integrity of that well still holding because you've now got a direct route from your agriculture to your radioactive layer of the strata. I'm a grandma, I've made two generations. I am obliged now to ensure that I leave the place tidy for them. We're at the point where if that drill touches the ground, it would have to touch our bodies first. We just can't let it happen. We're driving to Preston New Road, which is one of the sites where Quadrilla wants to start fracking. So Tina and Bob are going to show it to us. So this is the field where they're proposing to put the fracking site. Under us is the Sherwood Aquifer, the second most important water course in the country. So what happens here happens throughout the course of the Sherwood Aquifer that runs right across to the Pennines. That... This is not an isolated thing. Air and water have no boundaries. They don't know they're Lancashire. The fractivists have legitimate concerns, but in a place like Blackpool that has been in financial decline for decades and is only barely surviving on its former reputation as a prime seaside destination, the prospect of new jobs and investment is a hard one to compete with. While well, Tina and the other fractivists are launching their Frack Free Lancashire campaign to spread information and stop fracking happening in Blackpool. Quadrilla, the shale gas company that hopes to start drilling for gas here, are financing their own pro-fracking group called the Northwest Energy Task Force, which consists of well-known and liked 
businessmen and women in Blackpool. Aside from Quadrilla, Centrica, the parent company of British Gas, also funds the Northwest Energy Task Force. But they insist their activities are independent of their financial supporters. Blackpool is traditionally a tourist town. Tourism, tourism is what we do, and we do it really, really well. But unfortunately, um, it's not creating enough jobs and it's not creating enough quality jobs. Are you at all worried about the side effects of fracking? We hear horror stories from America, but we also are not told that, it is, that the industry is very little regulated over there, whereas in this country, it's one of the top regulated industries. Um, and I'm talking about responsible fracking. So I am talking about, you know, considering the environment, considering the, the communities, considering the areas. With fracking applications pending all over the UK and conflicting information, there is a real need for a public debate about fracking, hoping to kickstart such a debate and invite the government and the industry to engage with the people. A campaign called Talk Fracking was launched by fashion icon Vivian Westwood and her son Joe Curry. So tonight we're going to try and talk about fracking and try to make sense of it. Now we'd like to have made more sense of it because we did invite people from the industry and they didn't want to talk about it, which is interesting um, because, you know, there's plenty to talk about and they, they, they reckon they have a good story, so it would be great to hear it. You know, 48% of people in England still don't know what fracking is and we were hoping to have a debate whereby they would start to understand. I left the government two years ago because I was becoming increasingly concerned at the growing gap between British politics and the British people. And the debate about fracking is a perfect illustration. What this is about is to create short-term opportunities for people who are not from the communities where they're going to be operating. And in a way where all of the costs and all of the risks are to be borne by the communities themselves. It's fraudulent, politically. One by one, all these pro-fracking people just dropped out. We couldn't have a debate. We had to just start talking to people who were there who were very concerned about fracking. There was a handful of community groups opposing this two and a half years ago. We are now 180 community groups strong. Both the government and the shale gas industry refused to speak to the growing anti-fracking movement. So we wanted to see if they would talk to us. We're interested in uh, your activities in Lancashire because you've applied for drilling permission there. Or is there anywhere else I could call? Okay, do you know when they will be back? So this is Riverstone. For us, energy is a lifestyle, not a job. We're interested in uh, setting up an interview with Lord Brown, and I was wondering if you could point me in the right direction. We learned that Quadrilla's chairman is Lord Brown, the former CEO of oil giant BP. He is also the UK government's top non-executive director and sits in the cabinet. And he's a partner of Riverstone Holdings, a private energy investment group which has shares in Quadrilla. As we waited for the industry and policymakers to get back to us, we made our way back to Blackpool. The Frack Free Lancashire protesters, together with a group called Reclaim the Power, had occupied a field next to one of the proposed fracking sites. Tina, Louise and Bob took us here about two months ago when they launched their campaign. And today, the scenery is quite different. Right here is a massive tent where they have all their big meetings and there are smaller tents scattered around the place where they have everything from quadrilla puppet making to activist speed dating. Four or five kilometers that way is the well that caused the earthquake in 2011. It started here and we're going to stop it here. <laughs> Tina, what have you been up to since we saw each other yeah, last? Kind of busy. We decided that we needed to make an action before Quadrilla get licensing approval, rather than waiting around 
to take our action once they've got approval, let's start making ourselves heard a bit louder beforehand. So we came up with a plan and we were going to model ourselves on um, Pussy Riot. They were topless and we figured the grandmas we might struggle, even with nipple tassels, which we did discuss. <laughs> we ended up coming up with this idea for a nanny cab. Five o'clock in the morning, we came over the fence, took the field, stood back, and, and the donations of food, ice, milk, bread, water, furnishings, came every half hour throughout the day. Just people so pleased we'd done this. We're in field one, which is an access road field, or destined to be an access road for the drill site. Field two, same, access road for the drill site. Field three, the drill site. Field four, the farmers. Field three, the drill site. A few weeks back, they um, put three festival tents in, very, very flimsy things. A couple of security guards and section six it. Why would Quadrilla need to hold a field on a squatter's law just to keep us off it? So wait, Quadrilla have Quadrilla squatted? paid the security team to squat the field. And so we looked and thought, you just set a precedent there, mate. <laughs> That's a bloody fine idea. You have a bunch of nanas that are going to steal that idea and come down here. It means every investor in Riverstone Holdings, Centrica and Quadrilla now has shares in a squat in a field in Lancashire. Wow, I bet they feel good about that. That's the security camera. So I'm being filmed. This guy's filming me. This CCTV footage is collected and used by Quadrilla Resources Limited and the landowner for security and safety management. Hi, sorry, can I ask a question? So you're moving the camera around. Am I being filmed right now? Do you speak? Can you comment on why I'm being filmed? No comment, okay. It's pretty clear that the guys won't talk to me and the camera is following me, so I am made aware that they're tracking my movements. With all our efforts to try to get a hold of Quadrilla or Lord Brown or anyone in the industry, for all I know, this camera over here and that non-responsive security guy may be the closest that we'll get. We wanted to interview the Lancashire County Council, who were processing Quadrilla's applications to frack. When we got in touch with them the other week, they told us that it wasn't appropriate for them to talk about fracking at the moment. So I just wanted to call and follow up on the email that I, I sent you and see if it was possible to speak to someone. Okay, bye. He was gonna check and see if there's anyone. The Lancashire Council never got back to us. We wanted to ask them how much the government's financial incentives for fracking would impact on the council's decision making. It is a lot of money. We're saying as soon as a well is dug, the local community should get £100,000. They should get 1% of the revenues over the life of that well. That could be up to £10 million per well. And today we're announcing that the local council should keep 100% of the business rates. Aside from these incentives, the government also released a heavily censored report on how fracking would affect rural economies and house prices. They stated the reason for the redactions was to avoid closing down early discussions around the development of shale gas. Quadrilla states that predicting any negative impact on house prices as a result of shale gas exploration is at best speculation and at worst scaremongering. We're in Roseacre where a couple, Marie and Roland, have had difficulties trying to sell their house because Quadrilla have applied to frack 500 yards away. We, we actually sold it, but immediately the people have looked into the fracking situation. They said, no, we just can't risk the dangers of air pollution, water pollution, ground pollution, noise, traffic. We feel this is all due to Quadrilla. This is my file. <laughs> oh, wow. And this is your research trying to find out yep. about yeah. fracking? About fracking, yeah. yeah. There's a letter here that came from the people who, who originally wanted to buy the house. The reason was the company Quadrilla was fracking for shale gas so close to the property 
After taking some time to read about the various implications of fracking, our main concerns are with the risk to our health and environmental impact associated with fracking. Therefore, they've decided to pull out of the mm. offer. I've been arguing with him, and I got the tribe one of I guess. Is that a defensive weapon? I was like, no, it's not. As we were wrapping up the interview, our production assistant rushed in, saying we'd parked on a farmer's land, and Quadrilla security guard had locked the gate so we couldn't leave. He's driving away, okay. I guess we'll have to wait for the police to be let out. Can I ask what's happened? When the police arrived, they explained that the reason for all this commotion was the high tension surrounding fracking and that the farmers were scared stiff that their land was going to be occupied as well. So we're finally on our way. Quadrilla's security guard, instead of just letting us move our car, he locked it in for about an hour and then called the police saying that we had intimidated him and tried to attack the farmer, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yes, they're still here. Let's go check out the protest. It was the big action day of the anti-fracking protest camp. What's interesting with the fracking movement is that there are a huge amount of people involved in it. They've got involved because it might be happening in their backyards and they're from all political backgrounds. Um, and they've just gone and looked it up for themselves and they've come back absolutely furious. They feel that this is an absolute affront to democracy, that something has been pushed along, that we're all being told it's safe, that it's good for the economy, there's going to be loads of jobs, and it takes five minutes to know that that's not true. So as a result, you have, you know, elderly right-wing retired accountants who are now asking us, how do, how do you do a D-lock, you know, and, and how do you get involved in direct action, which is, I've never seen it before. I don't particularly want to go and face up to police. I don't want to face the brutality that that brings into my life. Certainly not at my age. Maybe if I was in my 20s, I'd be up for it. But I wasn't really expecting to do that now I've reached my 50s. These people will not go down without a fight. We are their biggest threat. And that's a crazy situation. We are a force to be reckoned with because they didn't try challenging a grandmother who's angry or a mother mm -hmm. who's defending her young. And once you do that, you've challenged the most raw animal side to us yeah. that none of us wants to bring out. So we'll cover it with an apron and a smile and a bit of eccentricity. Yeah. It pushes too far. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then I yeah. think that the, 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 the raw reality of what we are when we defend our young is entirely different. We're outside the Chamber of Commerce and the activists have found out that Quadrilla's offices are supposedly on the top floor. If Quadrilla aren't going to put their name on this building, we're going to put their name on this building. They know that they're not wanted here. Lancashire County Council has received 14,000 complaints about Quadrilla's activities. At a recent meeting, nine Blackpool councillors had to declare that they were the community organisations they were part of had been given money by Quadrilla. Quadrilla is trying to use money to get, it, to get what it wants, rather than actually going through due democratic process. We don't have the financial resources that Quadrilla do, but we do have our bodies and we do have our voices, and that's what we're trying to do here today. During a council meeting in July, a dozen local councillors had to declare, either directly receiving or being part of an organisation getting money from Quadrilla. What concerned the activists was how Quadrilla, with pending fracking applications under review by the council, was sprinkling money around to organisations that local councillors were involved with. From a chamber point of view, we believe in the economic benefits that uh, shale gas fracking will actually bring to the county, that uh, companies like Quadrilla could actually bring. So we do support shale gas. What we don't support is the aggravated trespass that the protesters behind us have actually done today. So we finally managed to arrange a time to call one of Quadrilla's press people. So let's see if he picks up. I know you have said no, but I just wanted to ask 
one more time, is there any possibility to get an interview with anyone at Kudrilla? It's important to give Kudrilla the opportunity to give their side of the story. And all we have to show now is doors being shut in our faces. So you're telling me that the reason is because they're too busy, uh, but you think that they probably wouldn't want to speak to me anyway. Kudrilla clearly didn't want to talk to us on camera, but we did eventually hear back from Lord Brown's chief of staff, who said Lord Brown would be happy to talk to Vice, but only about the release of his latest book on LGBT equality, which he thought was much more important than fracking. That evening at the camp, we met with Liz Arnold, an anti-fracking campaigner from Pennsylvania, where high-volume hydraulic fracking has been happening for years. Since fracking came to Pennsylvania, it's had a very divisive effect on communities. These are people who have lived on these properties for generations, and they've never had these problems before. And as soon as they started fracking, and then their water went bad, then their animals started getting sick, their families started getting sick. You can look at every single state where they've been fracking, and you can't find one place where there haven't been significant well failures, where there haven't been spills, leaks, explosions. We are not the industry's guinea pigs. We cannot compromise our water supply or our health, you know, while they figure out what is a very costly, very dangerous, very dirty technology. What is so insidious is the way that for-profit corporations are undermining individual and community sense of power. They try to convince people that they have no power, that it's all inevitable. And the minute you accept that, you've lost. Later that night, some of the activists at the camp decided it was time for tougher measures. I'm guessing that the best possible scenario is that they decide to move the drill tomorrow and we close the site and the lorries are not able to come in. What do people feel about 8.30? So we've had about three hours sleep. We're about to go out and take some direct action against fracking in the UK. We've got people in the northwest of the country and obviously that's where a lot of the attention will be. But this is a, a national issue, this is a global issue. It's really important to me that that, that is demonstrated today. They found out that a drill was going to arrive at Rathlin Energy's fracking site in Yorkshire. The drill never arrived, but they went ahead with the action anyway. Subject to a court possession order. So you'll now arrest me. This hand is super glued to the fence. If you move it, it's going to rip my skin off. Okay? Yeah. That's the situation. So you super glued to that gate. Hold that white line. Like the determination of some of those people to just put their bodies in the front line because there is literally no other way to get through anymore that we don't want this to happen in our communities and on our land. After months of trying to get an interview with the government, finally, one of the main regulatory bodies responsible for monitoring fracking, the Environment Agency, agreed to meet with us. We wanted to ask them how they had checked the Priest Hall site after the earth tremors and what the government was doing about experts' calls for shale gas-specific regulations. Interestingly, David Cameron recently appointed a new head to the Environment Agency, Sir Philip Dilley, who used to work for a company that provided environmental reports for Quadrilla. Are there any new regulations in place just for high volume hydraulic fracking? No, the, we are applying existing regulations which are comprehensive. We looked at the risks uh, to see whether the existing regulations were adequate and concluded that they were. The main environmental risks are actually around uh, the, the, the uh, potential for surface spills of chemicals, 
the management of the waste materials that are produced from this activity. A lot of people are worried about leaking into, into the aquifers, into the water supplies. High volume hydraulic fracking produces earth tremors, which it did the first and only time that we tried this technique in the UK. You're absolutely right that in the one well at Priest Hall in Lancashire in the northwest of England, where uh, hydraulic fracturing was undertaken, it did it, it evoke some um, earth tremors. You're not talking about uh, an event that is likely to cause any significant structural uh, damage. Um, um, and, and indeed, in this case, it did not affect um, the, the integrity of um, of the well. Is there anywhere where I can see these reports proving this? Well, the, the, the monitoring that we did um, uh, is available online. So, but, but as I say, because there's been no activity on that site since it was suspended in 2011, uh, there has been no, uh, no requirement to do any, any further monitoring. But it's after this accident happened that it's important to see what has happened to the earth. Yes, and we skin. did work with the operator to look at whether there had been any uh, compromise to the integrity of the well, and, and we concluded that there, there hadn't been. To try to find out what happened at Priest Hall after the tremors, we did some more research and discovered emails between Quadrilla and the health and safety executive, revealing a leak between the well casings and a pressure reading that according to three independent experts, show signs of a well integrity failure. However, this only proves that gas leaked inside, not outside of the well. Quadrilla states that the well integrity at Priest Hall is and always has been secure. The health and safety executive told us the increased pressure may be read as a well integrity issue, but that no fluids have leaked from the well and that the pressure reading was within the design parameters and therefore not reportable to them. A few weeks after the anti-fracking protest camp outside Blackpool, Tina Louise was summoned to court. We went and we occupied a field in order to draw attention for the local residents to know that, you know, if you think we're a disruption, you know, we're three weeks of disruption. What you're looking at if they get a yes on planning is, you know, decades of incredible destruction of this landscape and danger and risk to your community. However, the farmer says that as a result of um, our occupation of his field, he lost his milk yield. And so now with the help of Quadrilla financing everything he's doing, he's taking us to court. I think the purpose of this case and why he's now suing for tens of thousands of pounds is not just, you know, financial gain. It's very much to make a point that if you stand up to us, we will put all our might and Quadrilla, and, you know, the fracking company's money into this and we will take you to court. And so it's done to scare people. Tina is facing a possession claim brought by the landowner and she's being tried under the civil procedure rules and could be ordered to pay extensive legal fees and damage costs. I feel a, a bit anxious because it's strange and unknown, but more than anything I feel affronted and indignant and angry and 100% more determined than ever. So Tina Louise just went into the courtroom and we can't come with her, we're not allowed to film, so we're just going to wait here and see what the outcome is. came out that were worth coming out. Firstly, the judge made a good point about the farmer not being the one who's really looking for costs, that is he being funded by Quadrilla, and that had to be admitted to as yes, Quadrilla is entirely funding their side. Their side is claiming um, costs of in excess of £50,000 from me because they're saying, 260 odd pound an hour for solicitors, a requirement for two. They've really blown it out of proportion. Okay, what do you think this court case signals? What did I learn from today? I learned that that's not where I find justice. I don't find it in my courts of law. I watch a game. I watch a game where the guy with the most power, money and influence wins. And so now we just accept that this is not the place we, we fight our fight. Nothing changes anything. 
until we get it stopped. That is the only change we seek. Anything along the way is just another hurdle, another obstacle, another thing to work out to bypass, and on we go.